Hello everyone, welcome to Piano Love. So this is gonna be a, a really improvisation tutorial because this morning all of the fragments, I recalled this particular fragment was left hand in the sonata where I struggled with my left hand for, I'm not afraid to say years, <clears throat> in my teens, I was probably 14, 15, something like this. And eventually, even after years of practicing, I still couldn't make it. It was still too loud, too tense, it slowed down my uh, general tempo of the sonata. And I used to ask all piano-related uh, people, whether it's teachers or parents of my friends, parents of my classmates, how to deal with this part. And nobody could give me a help. Um, they would always say, well, you know, it's a difficult part, you have to practice more. And, um, you know, all the jury that is listening to you, they're always looking forward <laughs> to hear this part because the sonata itself is not that hard, but particularly this place <sighs> is very, very challenging. So, as soon as I recall that, I was like, no way, I'm going to make it now. <laughs> After 20 years with my new system, I'm going to make it, I'm going to show it. Um, and so basically I practiced a bit this morning and uh, it still, it, it really worked. And, but I had to apply actually all the principles. As you, can, as you know, in my complete uh, Chopin tutorials, I just took something that wasn't related to, to the sound, to the touch, to imagination. But here, I really wanted to make it in a full um, package. So I did apply sound imagination uh, of texture, harmony, dynamics and voicing. Um, and you will see later that harmony makes so, so beautiful this part. that You, you just completely forget about technical problems when you follow harmony and without dynamics without clear impulse of the exact touch you want to have you could never play this part successfully even if you can play it fast it would still be loud your left hand would be still loud and if you try to control and play it softer then some sounds either disappear or you will feel more tight and um, your technique part will mm, suffer will suffer okay <laughs> So this is precisely what I've done from, <laughs> from zero to the end. And that's what I do in every of my pieces, but just an example of, um, of how it works on these three lines. First, I imagined, without even touching keys, uh, separate hands in timbre or texture of the sound I want to hear with movement, with glissando between notes, how one sound is blending to another sound gradually. And about all of this, how to develop this, I will talk about uh, in my coming series of live stream how to develop this musical inner ear. So then I connected it with wrist movement. So this is how it looks in my left hand. And as you can see on, on the score, um, those red circles show the elbow movement. So the wrist and elbow wouldn't match here. The wrist would go to the left because this note is lower than previous note. But my elbow would go to the right. Again, wrist to the right and my elbow goes to the left. This way. And so let me just play once so you could see it. tempo repeating so many times the same pattern that will stiff my wrist so and preventing me from speeding up so I'm just playing fast Thank you. 
a common belief that you should play fourth finger on the black key, but it depends. If you play the fast passage, chromatic, for example, or scale, of course it's better fourth finger, otherwise fifth finger will get tired. But if you have plenty of time between octaves, I prefer to use fifth finger to be more stable, I guess, and again, to avoid any stretching, any possible stretching of my hand. imagine every note before touching the key. Now let me show you how I'm gonna play while imagining every note and I am imagining in the texture of water but I always encourage students to start with imagining string group of instruments as it's easier to recall um, this kind of timbre and uh, I'm gonna use wrist and elbow movements in both hands and I'm going to apply intonation, I'm going to internally sing when I'm playing using weight of my body. And I'm also going to use the pedal because um, this sound would already match my imagined sound because I'm imagining every note in, in sound texture. So basically I'm going to imagine it, um, I'm going to intonate it internally with using uh, body weight and I'm going to use wrist and elbow movements. So I'm imagining every note before touching the key. more expressions to play. So let's just continue. Especially, it's 
so beautiful over here. Combined with elbow movements, 
that's the key for a comfortable left hand. Anyways, I'm just gonna play with musical stitch ones to show you. Mixed with um, with image, 
So for example, the first time I go to the beginning, then next time, with time development and breaks, and to rise in the climax of culmination. And again, I, I all feel it in between notes through my internal string in one thing. Again, that's not very important to show. Um, maybe I would apply time. Okay, let's apply time. So I would feel <laughs> the um, the sadness and pain of beginning in the slow and heavy, very sad times. So I think that's the best part to show you guys because I'm just gonna play it. And every time I'm going to play it, I'm going to play a little bit faster, a little bit faster. Um, and let's see how fast I can go. Yeah. And uh, one more time I want to um, highlight that this movement of left hand, when I go second down, with elbow movement, I will always keep in mind. And even when I play faster, it's going to be just faster movement of elbow. Because if I don't make it, I miss the note and I feel stiffness in my wrist. it was fixed but also musically uh, it was so much more expressive and so much more beautiful to play and feel it and that would be it i'll see you soon bye bye